Hello and welcome back to Euro Transfer Talk, where we round up the latest rumours and gossip surrounding the continent's best players. Remember, the most liked comment will feature on this week's Sunday Vibe, so leave your thoughts down below. Let's get into it. We kick off in Rome, where Jose Mourinho's Gialarossi side may have got a vital 2-0 win over Genoa last weekend, sealed with two excellent goals from teenage sensation Felix Safina Gian, but things aren't going so well off the pitch. In typical Mourinho fashion, he has already come down pretty hard on members of his squad, regularly lamenting the weakness of the players outside of his starting 11, and it appears his relationship with Nicolo Zaniolo is less than perfect. According to Calcio Mercato, the 22-year-old Italian had a little argument with the Portuguese coach during training on Monday. So it was interesting to see the former Inter Milan youth player left on the bench for a second successive game on Sunday. It's fair to say that the attacking midfielder hasn't been in his best this season. Having missed the entirety of last campaign with injury, it's no surprise it's taken him a while to get up to speed. But he's now played nearly 730 league minutes without contributing a single goal. It appears that he's been a little too keen to impress. Although he now takes a career-high 2.2 shots per 90, only 0.7 come from inside the penalty area a career low. We are sure his form will start to turn around soon. After all, he still creates 1.2 chances and completes 3 dribbles per 90, the second best record in Serie A, suggesting that Mourinho should work harder to get Zaniolo on side rather than ostracising him. It appears that former Inter Milan manager Antonio Conte has been monitoring the situation, with Calcio Mercato claiming that Spurs are one of a number of sides watching the dynamic forward. According to the article, with the contract expiring in 2024, Zaniolo's current valuation is around €40 million. Euros. Given his pedigree and potential, we believe Spurs would be lucky to land a player of Zaniolo's quality, especially given the struggles of Lucas Moura and Bergwijn this season, who have contributed to combine zero goals and two assists in 16 league games between them. Spurs fans, would you welcome Zaniolo's arrival? And Roma fans, we want to hear from you. How big a loss would Zaniolo be? You know what to do. But Spurs aren't the only North London club chasing one of Europe's brightest talents. Oh no, that's because Arsenal have supposedly identified RB Salzburg's Karim Adeyemi as their primary target for next summer. The 19-year-old has wowed audiences with his performances in not only the Austrian Bundesliga, where he has scored 11 and assisted 1 in 14 league games so far, but also the Champions League, with his three goals in four games to date putting Di Rottenbullen in the driving seat in Group G, two points clear with two games to go. He's been linked to Liverpool and PSG over the last few months, but according to the Mirror, Mikel Arteta believes that the three-cap German would be the perfect long-term replacement for Lacazette, who despite some improved performances recently, is still expected to leave at the end of the season. With 25 goals and 17 assists in just 73 games for the club, or 0.57 goal contributions per game, the Munich-born striker has helped continue Salzburg's remarkable success, which has seen them win the last eight Austrian Bundesliga titles, and cement themselves as an emerging force on the European stage. Whilst Adeyemi will struggle to replicate Erling Haaland's remarkable performances, at just 19 he appears to have the world at his feet. But is he the right fit for Arsenal? It's been notable in recent weeks how much their performances have improved up to the Liverpool game, with the more physical Lacazette up front rather than Aubameyang, who isn't as adept at holding up the ball as the Frenchman. Known as more of a last shoulder striker who only completes an average of 11 passes per game in the Champions League, would Adeyemi be a significant enough difference maker in their front line if Lacazette departed? Would they be better placed going for a target man such as Calvert-Lewin or Vlavic? Gunas, what do you think? Let us know in the comment section. We head to Barcelona now where I'm afraid we have some sad news. It appears that Sergio Aguero is going to be forced to retire from football. The Argentine superstar suffered chest pains and shortness of breath in Barcelona's La Liga clash against Alaves in October, and was initially expected to be sidelined for three months. But according to journalist Gerard Romero, his retirement will be announced at some stage this week, possibly before this video goes live. Romero wrote on Twitter, Con Aguero retires, heart problems force him to leave football. Next week, a press conference is scheduled to announce his withdrawal. The 33-year-old has been beset by bad luck since joining Barcelona from Man City in the summer, only making five appearances for the club due to a calf injury before his latest issue. If it is to be the end for Aguero in football, he will at least be able to look back on an El Clasico goal as the highlight of an otherwise miserable time representing the Blaugrana. As sad as this is for Aguero, it's also devastating news for Xavi in Barcelona, who currently have Braithwaite out with a knee injury until likely the new year, and Ansu Fati struggling to remain fit. According to Sport though, their new manager will be looking to strengthen their number 9 position in January and is looking at his former club Al Saad, 
specifically Algerian forward Baghdad Munjeda as their solution. The 46-capped Algerian who helped the Greens to the Africa Cup of Nations title in 2019, scoring the winning goal in the final against Senegal, has represented Al Saad since 2015 and has racked up an impressive 169 goals in 165 games for the club. At 29 years old, Bungeda wouldn't be the most long-term option, and his signing mid-season would likely prompt ridicule online. But given the state of Barcelona's finances and the fact he has worked with Xavi before, maybe he isn't the worst short-term option. Middle Eastern football fans, we want to hear from you. What can you tell us about his playing style and chances of success? Get in the comments! We hop over the border now to Paris and talk PSG where Pochettino's long-term future of the club looks undecided, with Man United interested in his services. But no matter who is in charge next summer, be that Pochettino, Zidane or any other manager, at the top of the club's list will be the future of Kylian Mbappe. No closer to signing a new deal, 22-year-old Mbappe will in all likelihood join Real Madrid on a free transfer meaning the Parisian chance will almost certainly be entering the market for another forward. Although Dortmund's Erling Haaland had been said to be at the top of their wish list, Spanish publication El Nacional claimed that PSG have grown tired of pursuing the Norwegian and have been put off by the significant commission his agent Mina Raiola would demand. According to the article, the nine-time champions have turned their attention to Fiorentina's Dusan Vlaovic, whose brace this weekend against Milan took him to 10 league goals for this season, a figure topped only by Lewandowski and Salah in Europe's top five leagues. Vlaovic might have had a quite simply staggering 2021 with 27 Serie A goals, the most by a La Viola player since 1960. But in our opinion, he wouldn't be a good replacement for Mbappe. Whilst the Frenchman is an outstanding dribbler and creator, Vlaovic is far more of a poacher, with his 18 passes per game more similar to a player like Icardi, who has struggled to make a consistent impact in Paris. Whilst Vlaovic is clearly a very talented player, we'd urge any club to seriously consider how they wanted to operate before committing a fee expected to be around 70 million euros on a 21-year-old with no Champions League experience and one phenomenal year of goal scoring under his belt. PSG fans, do you agree though, Vlaovic or no Vlaovic? And if not, who would you rather sign to replace Mbappe? You know what to do. And finally, we finish with some very surprising news. Mason Mount is reportedly unhappy at Chelsea. Yes, according to Spanish publication Todo Fijais, the 22-year-old attacking midfielder isn't happy that the club haven't offered him improved terms in his contract, which he signed in July 2019, and that sees him earn £88,000 per week, which according to salary website Spotrack, ranks 17th in the Blues squad. Having established himself as one of Chelsea's key players under both Lampard and Tuchel, making 107 appearances over the last two completed seasons, winning a Champions League and becoming an England regular, the Cobham Academy graduate clearly believes he is worth more. This story is supported by Calcio Mercato, who believe that Real Madrid and Bayern Munich would both be interested in signing the 26-capped Englishman, with the latter earmarking him as the perfect replacement for the legend that is Thomas Muller when he finally hangs up his boots. Whilst we certainly believe that Mount is at the level required to play for any team in the world, we struggle to see him leaving Chelsea anytime soon. Even if he was keen for a pay rise, the Blues have shown they are willing to reward their best players handsomely, with Lukaku on a reported £325,000 per week and Kante on £290,000 per week. If Mount bides his time, surely he will be financially rewarded. Secondly, in just pure sporting terms, why would he want to leave for Real Madrid right now? As Chelsea showed in the Champions League semi-finals last term, they are comfortably ahead of Los Blancos right now. And with the Spaniards wedded to a 4-3-3 at current, it doesn't feel like there would be a clear spot for Mount in his preferred position. As for Bayern, that would be a magnificent opportunity. But with Jamal Musiala already coming through, would the 31-time champions really want to spend a huge amount of money on another number 10, when Robert Lewandowski would surely need replacing within a few years? For these reasons, we can't see Mount going anywhere anytime soon. So we are putting these rumours firmly in the bin. We want to hear from you though. What do you think would have to happen for Mount to actually leave Chelsea? And how much do you think he'd even cost? Get at us in the comments. So guys, that's Euro Transfer Talk for another week. What do you guys think of the stories? Do you see any of these actually coming true? Surely Mason Mount isn't going anywhere. I'm calling absolute rubbish on that one. If you've enjoyed this episode, remember to smash that like button. It really does help us with the algorithm. And I'll catch you next time.